Welcome to Uncle Dean's and my ankles are really not well so I have been given a lift to Uncle Dean's and I'm going to spend some time watching a really awesome show so I'm going to pass you over to Uncle Dean, one second. This is Screaming Lord Such, he committed suicide about 10 years ago, he suffered with depression, he hung himself in his mother's house, as you know he had his own political party, this Raven Looney party, this is the Rock and Wild Revival 1972 at Wembley. Um, the main act was um, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry, amongst a few other small ones, and I stopped to feel good earlier, support Hines, who done Just Like Eddie in 63 on Joe Meek Records, North London. He shot himself in 67 and killed his landlady, because he got so paranoid, they not tell him any amphetamine tablets. He thought his, bug, his shop was being bugged, studio by Bill Spector and all the great producers of the time in the 60s. Miss Stenton was the name, she had a handbag shop. If you watch the film Telstar, which he done, that was his tune, 1961, that was Margaret Thatcher's favourite record of all time, Telstar, 61, that knocked out the soft charts in 1961. So, went what, to what, America. so what is that? What that's is Billy Fury's back in band. Right. So there you go, ladies. They and called the Outlaws and they became the Tornadoes, they backed Billy Fury. So this is awesome, ladies and gentlemen. So enjoy the show. And I've come to Uncle Dean's because I need to go with the flow. So shine on everybody and enjoy some Uncle Dean time because we are unique characters. Not unique, screaming on such. His real name is David Such. Right. But he's a politician in Raven Looney Party. He thought politics was so silly. He'd done a silly thing. He had Dodes Air Green, wore Teddy Boy clothes and got his own party going. And like I say, he hung himself through depression at his mother's house. I think he was 52 or 56. That was about 10, 12 years ago. He played Colchester oh, about 20 years ago at the Oliver Twist. His biggest hit was um, Jack the Ripper, 63. He'd done a good version of Little Richard's Good Golly Miss Molly. I've got his best album and he'd done a heavy rock album in 69. Like Deep Purple, Black Sabbath sort of music. It's called Screaming All Such. Heavy, it's very rare and collectible. Uncle Sean's got a copy. Final. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want me to carry on? Yeah, uh, not yet. Well, that's rude. Mary Blonde, the first person Jack the Ripper killed. You know, from Whitechapel, East End London. That's the first prostitute to kill, Mary Blonde, Jack the Ripper. Hell's Angels there, hippies, Teddy Boys, Mick Jagger's there, he gets in the field. Yeah, it's still just ringing in the early 70s. I was only seven when that was going on. It's a navy there. It's all kind of people there. She's playing one of the prostitutes Jack the Ripper killed back in the 18th century. Like I said, Mary Bly was the first victim. They reckon that was royal family. But first, Jack the Ripper was so good at cutting organs and that, they reckon that was high class surgeon. And his theory said he's what? He's buried at Sport Lee Stoke, just outside Colchester, in Great Blackman. Right. But they proved it, but they can't. Got a bit of volume on there. Get into this. This is awesome. This is not on a channel. This is very rare footage that you can't get on TV. This is very special.
special disc that you can't buy. Yeah. So you won't be able to watch this, ladies Unless and gentlemen. You're at the show, you wouldn't have seen it. Unless you're at the show, you couldn't see it. So it's, it's enjoy this rare. It's Mick Jagger. Now. In, Mick Jagger. I wouldn't have thought anyone would have wanted to come. Oh, well, Dick Lee coming on. He's dead now. He used to make his own amplifiers and guitars, and he was a sheriff and all. He don't wear that sheriff's badge for no reason. He was a sheriff. But it's, I don't know. I don't know if I'm making it. I haven't really had a good look yet. Is that me, Jagger? It mm. looks different. He's 10 years old, and he was in the 60s. Roll right now. Dun 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 I like playing that one. Bo Diddley, yay! Roadrunner! Ah! Uh, can we have some more volume, Uncle Dean? Thank you. Tell us more about it. Bo Diddley was very good friends with little Richard and Chuck Berry because he was on Chess Records with Chuck Berry and they, it's a really rare LP, it's a double album, well it's one LP, I can't remember if it came out in 60 or 61 or 59, one side it's Chuck Berry, the other side it's Bo Diddley and it's got on it King of Guitars or something, that's very collectible, I've got a Bo Diddley original 50s EP, I've got all his CDs, he died about 10 years ago, Turn it up more. Tell us some more, Uncle. Well, if you're going to go out and buy any Bo Diddley CDs, this riff to not fade away and Mona, um, he's basically he's used that for every song he's ever written, apart from that instrumental Roadrunner, which is straight four twelve bar. Riff. All his songs are like this, with just different lyrics really. That's him who done not fade away, what Buddy Holly done, and Stones copied it off Buddy Holly. Made oh. it a little bit harder. And this is Bo Diddley? Yeah, he's the person the Stones looked up to, him and Chuck Berry, on Chess Records. Chess Records went down in 65, he died, Alan. Chess.
From, can't you? What's the name of this concert? London's Rock and Roll Revival 1972 at Wembley Stadium. I went to Wembley Stadium in 1978 to see Ipswich and Nottingham Forest play up 6 2 to Nottingham Forest. Chuck Berry, Joey Lee Lewis, um, Bo Diddley, like I said, Dr. Phil Good Sport Hines, which had a couple of hits with Joe Mead, like um, playing with the artists like Eddie, and he was in the Tornado, he was a bass player, 61 in Dan Telstar, and like I said, that's Margaret Patch's favourite record, that he was the mentor that knocked Elvis off the number one spot, beginning in 62, which is not you. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are having a chilled night with Uncle Dean, and I thought I'd bring you in and share it with you. Take a look at some of the pictures on the wall. Sid and Nancy, Sex Pistols. And that new group, we both like the Hell Freaks, don't we? The Hell Freaks, yeah, we like Hell Freaks. Yes, we certainly do. Very collectible Japanese one of Sid Fisher's in his coffin. I got that for £21 in, from Japan on eBay. Lucky to get it that cheap because it goes about 60 70 And I've still got that one sealed. You could buy it with the sunglasses and wet sunglasses, Sid Fisher's from DC Comics in town. I got it about 30 years ago. What did you pay for that? £19, I think it's still on there. What's that worth now? Probably 60, 70. I've never opened it. Un age 14 upwards. And you can hear the great Buddy Holly there being played. Peggy Sue. Well, I love you, girl, and I love you, Peggy Sue. And you can see still plenty of hippies about in the audience. Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. Peggy, 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 Peggy Sue. Peggy. It's like a pop billy. Pop billy, um, best of the rock. It's not the version of pop billy. Yeah, 
shop called Bennett Rock. My mate Louie went to it, 1971, 72. That's Malcolm McLaren there on the right. That's Johnny Rock. Oh, there, that one there, right here. That's the sort of clothes he was selling, Teddy Boy clothes, and then he went into sex clothes. This is original punk rock, it's supposed to be bondage clothes. So what, what's his Teddy name at the end? Clothes. What's his name there? That's Paul Cook, Johnny Watt, and Sid Vicious, and Steve Jones. Here's Malcolm McLaren's school, Teddy Rock. There he is, Malcolm. Let the skin hang on. And he, he, he made the sex with Sue Lapman, did he? Well, he was there, he wasn't a bishop of their manager, but he got, got in positions where they got famous. He's Jerry Lee Lewis. in the 50s when Chuck Berry wanted the end of the show um, they used to argue Jerry Lee Lewis and Chuck Berry was going to finish the show in the 50s and Jerry Lee Lewis said to Chuck Berry you finish the show and Jerry Lewis went on when he finished he set light to his piano of light a flute said follow that Chuck Berry went fuck no I can't <laughs> So Jimmy Hendrix done it in 67, that's where he got the idea from. Jerry Lee Lewis back 10 years earlier. In and, and Jimmy Hendrix done it at Monterey. Monterey. Yeah. Yeah. 67, 10 years later. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, you get some real facts here. Only with and me and. Who weren't the first people smashing things up? Jerry Lee Lewis just smashed his piano up. Did you do it on here? No. No. It's very big in music too. What? What? Yeah, what country did Jerry Lee Lewis come from? Louisiana, America. Is he still alive today? Yes, he is, yeah. He's very old now, he's about 81. And that's him there? Yeah. He's, so still... he's, he's about, about 38, 40 there. He's called him the killer. He's a great piano of a song of a He plays all big bands, swing, country, and beat. He sold X, his father on that farm, when he heard how to sell records, he made Elvis a star, he went to Memphis, he made Sam Phillips, he said, I've got a record for you, he knows I can sell that, he made him a star. Well, he had record? to sell X on his father's farm, get, get petrol, to get to Memphis, Tennessee, from what, Louisiana, what the where Hank Williams come from, and all. Um, Crazy Arms, is a country cover, but he changed it up a bit. Right. Didn't he do Great Balls of Fire? Yeah, it's his famous one. He's done loads, loads. Yeah. He was a preacher. He had a bright cold battle. He did rock and roll. He said he was a preacher. He was a preacher. He was famous. He was a man of all his films. That's the first thing. He was a first thing when he married up.
seven. Why? Sexual. A lot of shaking going on. Sex. And they banned it? Yeah. Elvis' wasteland, when Elvis was alive, the man drunk as a lord said, I'm the king of the world. Did he write his own? No, it's, it's an old blues song. Elvis done it as well. If you get a Sun record, original Jerry Lewis on Sun records, it's got pump and piano pedal stamped on the spiral scratch, you know it's original. So he's called him the pump and pedal, as well as the killer. Elvis Presley said to Jerry Lee Lewis, if I could play the piano as well as you, I'd give singing up. Yeah. People do not know how to enjoy themselves anymore. Shine on. That man's about 40 now. 